I labored with him for 22 years, nine years with Pastor Bowen, 31 years altogether. It hurts sometimes. Sometimes phone calls you don't want to, you don't want to answer the phone. You don't know whether it's going to be good or bad. I got a phone call and Rachel called me. That's unusual. Little did I know, I, I got a misunderstanding of what she was saying. And I thought she told me that the pastor was in the hospital, but she told me that the pastor had passed away. Uh, when I heard Sister Carol in the back, she broke down. I knew what had happened. It hurts sometimes. Sometimes you want to let go but you won't let go. You have to let go sometimes, but you don't want to let go. He was a pastor that pastored for 60 some years all over the country. He was a teacher, a friend, a brother. He was all that plus more. We miss him. But I said that at the film that he had a home going, but God had a home coming. God welcomed him into the kingdom. And it was hard to let go. Still is. But you have to let go sometimes. You can't hang on to it. I remember my wife passed away, 49 years. I was on my way back from Kentucky, just had to deliver a car. And I got a phone call that we about to lose mama. When I got there, she was gone. And I looked there, she lay 49 years. Now what do you do? What do you do now? My best friend, my baby, gone. Do you give up or do you trust God? I got to trust God every step of the way. One thing I realize and understand that regardless of what you lose, when I was, I was coming down uh, 421 on my bus, I was booing and crying. Tears were flying out the window. I heard a boy say, shut up. I said, who said that? He said, I said it. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'm here with you. I got myself together, got back on track with God. I lost track with God. I didn't want to serve God no more. One thing I realized, you might let go of God, but he will never let go of you. Sometimes we want to give up and say, I just can't go no further. Sometimes you, I've had enough. I can't take no more. God said, just hold on just a little while longer. 
You're going to get through this thing. I'm going to bring you through it. How many been there? How many been there when, 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 when the, the last thing you did, you, you, you didn't know how to come out of your situation. You didn't know what to do. So when you don't know what to do, don't do nothing. Wait on God. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew the strength. Amen. Just wait on God sometime. Amen. How many know what I'm talking about? Amen. Love one after love one. I get a call, my sister, on the way back from Chicago, back to Detroit, got hit by a semi-truck, plowed into the back of their car. The door was locked up. She got butt up alive. It hurt. And I asked God, how much more? And I hear the word say, many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them out of it all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And sometimes you got to cling to what you're clinging to, God. When you don't have anything else to hold on to, you got God. And that's enough. Somebody say, when you got Jesus, that's enough. Just hang on to him. I don't care what you're going through. Hang on to him. He'll never let you down. Amen? Yeah, that's right. And that's not my message. I'm ramping through over to the goodwill a couple of days ago. And I ran upon a book. And that book blessed me so much. And the word of it is, is by Abram John, the author of this book, the power and the authority of the church. Did you hear what I said? The power and the authority of the church. The church is powerful. I'm not talking about this building. We don't realize how powerful we are. And the devil don't want you to know how powerful you are. God said, behold, I give you dunamis power, reproducing power, so you can tread upon the enemy. The power of the church. I think it's in Matthew 16, 13, I believe. It said that Jesus came into the course of Caesarea Philippi and he asked the question, say, what are they saying about me? Who, what are they saying about the Son of Man? He said, well, some say you that... Elijah. Some say you're John the Baptist. He said, but I understand all that, but what are you saying about me? Right. 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 Peter said, you're the Christ. He said, Pete, you got it. <laughs> you, hit it on the, you hit the nail on the head. You got it. Because of what you said, I'm going to build my church upon that. Now that you know who I am, I'm about to tell you who you are. You're the rock, man. You are what I'm going to build on. And the very gates of hell will come again, but it cannot over, it can't take it over. It, I'm going to build a powerful church off of that word. Christ. And I realized one thing that the Methodist church is not the gospel. The Baptist church is not the gospel. Pentecostal is not the gospel. Presbyterian is not the gospel. The Catholic church is not the gospel. But Jesus Christ is the gospel. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have gospel. And the gospel is good news. Jesus said, I came that you might have life. Let you ready to have it to the fullness. And I begin to wonder and say, 
If this is the case, then we ain't the church. We're not doing what we're supposed to do. Hello? All right. All right. We talk in tongues, shout, dance. That's not what God called us to do. Hello? There's a word called ecclesia. I may know what that word means. It's a call out one. A group of people that are called out to be the church. We are the church, not this building. The pastor is not the church. The elder is not the church. The deacon is not the church. The choir is not the church. But we, as a whole, is the church. And what God is saying upon this church, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church in the very gates of hell cannot prevail against it. When we all get together and realize who we are and what we have in God, then we can have church. How many want to have church this morning? Come on now. I said, when we all get together, oh, what a time we can have. When you realize who you are in God, the Bible says anybody's in Christ, he's a new creature. The whole life is gone. Now. The whole you become brand new. You ain't just a church member. I remember when I got in the church, they brought the children out in front. I'm new and just got out of the Baptist church, just left Mississippi. Got to find a church somewhere. So I landed at the Methodist church. They got through singing. They brought the children down front. Anybody want to join the church? Sat in still. I sat down. Here come the usher. He's a candidate for the church of the Methodist Church. Woo! Here come by. Here come another person with a book. You want to join the choir? And there's nothing with the Methodist. You want to be the new member of the? They gave me a bunch of rules and regulations. But they never said nothing about Jesus Christ. I lived there for 18 years. Eighteen years of it. I was on my way from Dayton, Ohio, coming back to Indianapolis. I turned the radio on. And I heard somebody talking about the Livers Temple. I said, what is that? I never heard this story talking about, now nah, we're having a service at night. Holy Ghost is moving. Who? We never heard of the Holy Ghost. We were in conference in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The bishop got, somebody say. Bishop, what are we going to do about these Holy Ghost folks? He said, leave them alone. We're digging the fire. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> leave them alone. We are digging the fire. We don't want nothing to do with those folks. And I realized that something was wrong somewhere that I was not getting what I was supposed to get. They were saying, when I got here, something struck me that I never heard before. He was talking about righteousness and justification and grace and sanctification. I never heard that word before. What does it mean to be sanctified? I thought sanctification was people crawling upside the wall. I thought it was something that you wear. I thought it was something that the clothes you put on. Sanctification is not what you wear. It's not what you say. It's who you separate unto. You separate from yourself unto God. That's sanctification. I thought, I'm going to check it out. I came into the living temple. I have a shop. I have on a $400 suit. Boy, these folks are falling down on the floor. No, not me. I'm not falling down on that floor. 
In about five minutes, I was down on the floor kicking like the rest of them. And I don't know how I got down there. But it felt good. It felt so good I came back the next night. You know, when you get enough of you just can't get enough of Jesus. One just stop, one dose is not, you gotta get a double shot of Jesus. Come on now. I came back the second night. Come on now. And on the Sunday I'm supposed to be in my church, but I'm able to deliver simple. When I get home, my pastor sat in my living room. He said, What did I hear about you left this? I, 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 I did. He said, I can't handle that. Mm -hmm. I begin to realize who I was in Christ. A new creation. Not born from an organization, but born from above. Change. Mindset change. The third chapter of the book of Colossians says, since all this has happened, since you've been risen with Christ from above, set your affection, your mind on things above, for you are dead. How many dead folks we got to say? I mean, ah, by the way, if you talking, I'm raised up. I ain't dead. You're dead unto yourself, but you're alive unto God. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, well, Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt. Yes, he did. Moses did the preaching, but God did the leading. Moses never led nobody. He was a mafia. All Moses was said that, thus said the Lord God, let my people go and shut up. God never told Moses to lead nobody out of nowhere. He said, How do you do the preaching? Let me do the leading. But the Bible says, as many as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If God can lead you, you can become a son. But if you try to lead yourself, forget it. They ain't going to work. But God cares about you. He loves you so much that we do not leave you like he found you. Pastor, I'm trying to stay in one place. It's hard. <laughs> Matthew 6.33 But seek ye first what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What did he say? He ain't got nothing. Your righteousness don't mean nothing to God. In fact, you don't have any. When you realize it, the sooner you'll be better off. When I get myself together, I'm coming back to church. You'll never come back. Because <laughs> every time you think about somebody that did something to you, I'm not going back over that church no more. Not me, John. Not the way they treated me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Not about you. Right. Seek ye first. First place first. God first in your life. Yeah. Yeah. I got to talk to my pastor to see I don't know. I, I, the guy tells me, I better talk to my, I better talk to my pastor and put God first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now, what is the kingdom of God? It's not a building somewhere. It's not this building. The kingdom of God is in you. The kingdom of God is dominion, power. Holy Ghost, power. Reproduction, power.
That's the kingdom of God. Jesus told us, he said, you don't know how close you are to the kingdom of God. Show us the kingdom of God. He said, the kingdom of God is in you. We know how to operate in the natural kingdom. Yeah. Come on. I was telling um, Brian a few minutes ago that Mount Cuban just sold his company for $5.6 billion. But out of that, he made every one of his 300 employees millionaires. He gave them. And he knows how to operate in the natural kingdom, but not the spiritual kingdom. Our kingdom is greater than this kingdom on this earth. Our kingdom should dictate to the kingdom of this world, but still the kingdom of the world dictates to us. Come on now. Yeah. There was a story in 1929 that J.C. Penney's the stock market crashed and he lost everything. He went into seclusion. He went into a depressed state. It was so bad that he had to go in the hospital. He was there. He said, given up. He woke up the next day and he was alive. While he was there, he decided to walk down through the corridors. And on his way, when he was walking, he heard somebody singing, God will take care of you. Hey! J.C. Penney's multi-billion dollar company broke. But the son said, God will take care of you. He went into the chapel. He got a book out, the Bible. He began to read scriptures. He rose up from the state he was in. Came out of it. And here's what God said, don't look at your circumstances. Look at me. Don't look at the stock market. Look at me. Don't look at your sickness. Look at me. Focus on me. Don't focus on your problem. He walked out completely healed. Fully recovered. Seek ye first. And I'm not telling you that circumstances sometimes can be overwhelming. But Jesus is bigger than your circumstances. When you want to give up. When you don't know what to do. When you're in the hospital, your blood pressure is up to 240. Your heartbeat doesn't drop down to 36. My wife said, no, we don't know what to do. But God did. To God, you have to do something. And he did. Heartbeat went back up to 69. Blood pressure dropped down to 160. God will take care of you. When you don't know what to do, let God do it. Seek him first before you seek somebody else. Don't call your next door neighbor. Call on God. God can get you through it. God wants you well. He don't want you sick. God wants you prosperous. He don't want you broke. Come on now. If he, did, if he didn't want that, why did he put it in the Bible? Third John says, beloved above all things. 
Who's the beloved? You are. I wish, God has some wish for you, that you prosper and be in health, even yeah. as your soul man prospers. If you think God getting them glory out of you being sick, why don't he kill you? Stop taking your medicine so you can glorify God. God don't get no glory out of you being sick. He gets glory out of you being well. When you come to a place in life when you when all of the authority of the church is in God's people. A group of crawled out ones, Ecclesia. Upon the revelation of the word of God, I'm going to build my church. And the very gates of hell cannot take over. Things will come against you. I mean, it was just, you've been through some trouble. Just like, how did I get out of this? And you came out just like that. How many ever needed a financial miracle and you didn't know how to get it? I mean, you was out of it. You didn't have no money. I've been there. I'll get a letter in the mail. It says for Dr. Williams. I said, I'm a husband. It ain't for you. I get an attitude. <laughs> and they say, we've got to reroute this letter because it was sent to the wrong address. Why did they send a letter to my house and not the right address? So, the letter come on a Saturday morning. I never shall forget it. And I opened it up. She said, it's your mail. I said, I ain't open your mail. She said, open it up. When I opened it up, I looked there and I said five, I said five thousand dollars. I said, whoa. I said five hundred. No. Six thousand five hundred dollars. I said, whoa. Six thousand five hundred dollars. And they said, with no following address, God knows how to take care of you. If you just put him first, all other things will be added unto you. God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. Always will be there with you when you need him the most. How many of you when, when, when you thought it was all over with, it wasn't over with? You just want to give up and throw your hands up and just walk away. But you couldn't. God doesn't care who you are. As long as you know who he is. Whether you're Catholic, Pentecostal, Apostolic, Baptist, Methodist, it doesn't matter to God. He wants you to know who he is. I am God. I do what I want to do, when I want to do it, and how I want to do it. Nobody can stop me. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All other things will be added unto you. We stand before an awesome God. All down through the wilderness, God did the leading. He fed him, kept him, clothed him, suffered nobody to do him no harm. Well, the same God that did that, the Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, the day, and forever. For I am the Lord and I change not. Put God first. Watch what God does. We came in here. I didn't want to do it no more. I didn't want to 
be with a pastor no more. I didn't want to work with nobody. God had nothing to tell me to stay put. And he said, you always obey me. I said, yes, sir. There ain't nothing else I can do. I want left of me, I want to leave. I done had enough. I didn't want to go through this no more. Pastor said, I'm glad you didn't leave. I hung with him for 22 years. God, take care of you. Come what may. Whatever comes your way. Don't get discouraged. God will take care of you. God will feed you. He says, you seek me and all other things that be added unto you. I had a cousin in St. Louis, the Muslim, and their grandson, they had given up on him. And they said, call AC. All I do is that God take care of this young boy. They call back and say, he's going home. It doesn't matter who you are. Muslim, a lot of Muslim friends, but I don't change my belief. And I tell them, say, I know AC, you believe in God. I said, well, you want to pray five days, five times a day, that's fine with me. I ain't got nothing wrong with that. He said, we can't get some of the church folks to pray once a week. <laughs> I'm driving a bus. And about then, the man pulled over and stopped the bus and got in the bus and bowed down in front of the bus and stopped praying. That's their law. We don't have a law. We have freedom. Can I see the hands of the ones that praise every day? Somebody say, you ought to phone in sometime. God want to hear from you. <laughs> when you're all alone, turn our love Lucy off and the restless turn to God. If you just sit, be still yeah. and know that I'm God. Yeah. All of what you feel, something moving. Spirit of the Lord begin to move. Heart of a sata baba. When it begin to move upon the impacts of your life. Things begin to change when God moves. Sickness disappears when God moves. Despair got to go when God moves. Be still and know I'm God. God will take care of you. When you go on through the hard times. I told you about the story about when I was in Evansville driving a little bit of car. I didn't thought it was car for speed, it was so low. I'm speeding, didn't know it. The police pulled up behind me. I'm praising God and speeding all the while I'm praising him. And the lights going on, I ain't seen no lights. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, help me, Lord, help me, help me, Jesus. God never said nothing. The man kept writing the tickets. Oh, Lord, how many have been there? Let me, Lord. He started writing. Then after he got through writing, he said, have a nice day. Said, what? A nice day with a ticket? A $150 ticket? A man. The Holy Ghost say, you're mad, ain't you? 
Yeah, I'm mad. He said, you was praising me a few minutes ago. Why aren't you praising me now? <laughs> I'm the same God when you're getting a ticket. I ain't <laughs> He said, I haven't changed. I'm the same God when you praise me before you got the ticket. When you stop praying, I'm still the same God. I just stopped praising that night and got mad. It's strange how you can come out of praise and go into, uh, and get angry. <laughs> I mean, I'm being truthful. I got upset. When the Holy Ghost said, you're mad now, ain't you? He said, yeah, I'm mad. He said, I'm the same God you praise me. How come you're not praising me now? It lets me know that when you're going through some stuff in life that you trust God, he'll bring you out of it. He'll get you through it. Hold on to God's hand. Keep God before you. Keep your hands in God's hand. Somebody sung a song say, Jesus will never say no. You'll never say no. Come with me. But he'll never say no. Oh. I watched God move so many ways. So many times. I had to trust him. My baby lost her leg. She looked at me when she was going down and get the amputated. She said, you got to do something. I didn't know what to do. My baby was getting ready to be good. She said, Daddy, you got to do something. I couldn't do nothing. I had to trust God. She's still here. I wanted a girl so bad, I told my wife, you come home with another boy, I'm leaving the house. That's it. She said, I got a girl. I said, what you got? I said, I, I would not be out there. She said, I got, I have a girl. I said, there she was, little fat one. I went up. I cooked breakfast and grip and shell pancakes down her mouth every morning. She be patting around with a little girl. I was proud of that girl. Still is. Yeah. Still love my baby. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she, she said she had me wrapped around her finger. I mean, crazy stuff. But, I, but that's how much God loves you. God will bombard hell to get you out of it. Come on now. God will change your direction. He will change your thinking to get you out of it. God will do what he has to do to get you where you got to go. I didn't shovel snow. A big driveway. I push snow. I'm, I told my wife, that's it. I'm not pushing no more snow. She said, I bet if your daughter called you, you'll push some more snow. I said, no, I'm not me. Dad, I can't get out of the front door. I said, I'll be there in a few minutes. My baby. <laughs> Listen to me when I'm, I'm, I'm finna close. When you're going through some stuff, come on now. All right. This is my closing remark. And somebody saying, God said, this, hold on. I'll be there in a few minutes. Come on now. I'll be there in a few minutes. Hang on, I'm coming to you. Yeah. I'm going to get you out of this mess. They throw Daniel in the line there. We'll fix him. <laughs> throw him in the line of hungry. Oh, all they want is they lost their appetite. <laughs> they say, he ought to be dead by now. Probably, probably he ground up, man. Them, them lines that did a job on him. Open it up. Oh, Daniel. 
Cheer up, gang. <laughs> the Lord delivered me out last night. He got me out. The lion's laying back. Sleep. Devil come against you. God will put him in a sleep. Come on now. Devil going to make an attack on you. He's laying back asleep. Then what? What? Paul, I'm locked up in jail. I'm from, I'm, I'm got the clothes. And they in stocks and chains. Neck and stock, arms and chains. And Silas said, what are we going to do now, Paul? Paul said, let's sing a song. What? Let's get a lawyer. It's time to get a lawyer. He ain't time to sing no song. He said, once you that here's a note. He set me free. He unbroke his shackles for me. And all at once, bam! Shackles started falling off. The jailer said, say, we might well kill ourselves because they're going to kill us anyway. We don't let these guys loose. Paul said, hey, don't do yourself no harm. We're all here. I say this to you. Rise up and take your position in the body of Christ. When you pray the prayer of faith, believe it. Don't just be saying, son, your words are powerful. Your words will change your circumstances. Your words will change your direction. Speak powerful words because you serve a powerful God. God told Moses, say, Moses, go back down to Egypt. You know what Pharaoh said. If I come back, you don't kill me. He said, I'm going to be with you this time. <laughs> Woo! I'm going to be with you this time. Don't worry about the Pharaoh. Don't worry about the devil. Because I'm going to be with you this time. He said, that's the game. Let's go, God. <laughs> when you got God on your side, let's go, God. You get a pain in your side. I know. Him. I got you. All at once, you say, the pain's gone. God said, didn't I tell you? Yeah. Stick with me. I'm going to get you where you got to go. I'll get you there. I'll get you there. Pray, Pastor, in this church, we stand with you. We appreciate our pastor, our first lady. Beautiful people love God, family oriented. Thank you as a whole, as the people of this church, of the, of the ministry. We appreciate you. Yeah. We stand in prayer with you. We love you guys. We won't give up on you. Don't give up on yourself. Yeah. Realize what you love. God got more than what you lost. You got more to gain. Amen. Stand with me with you. Somebody said, hold on. Just a little while longer. Hold on. Just a little while longer. I don't care what you're going through. I got a feeling everything is going to be all right. Hold on. Just a little while longer. Hold on. Just a little while longer. I got a feeling everything is going to be all right. I know you want to give up sometime, but don't give up. Just hang on. Just a little while longer. Oh, I got a feeling. Everything, everything, everything is going to be all right. Oh, I 
that you've been praying. You want to give up on praying. Pray on. Just a little while long. I said, pray on. Just a little while long. I got a feeling everything is going to be all right. Well, if you can sing and you forgot how to sing, you just moan on. You just just moan on. Moan on. Moan on. Just a little while long. I got a feeling. Hey. Everything is going to be all right. Oh, yeah. Preach him. You just preach on. Preach on. Preach on. Preach on. Just a little while longer. I know you want to quit sometimes, but don't give up. Don't quit. I got a feeling. I said, I got a feeling. You got a feeling. I got a feeling. Everything. Everything is going to be all right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. 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 Hang on. Hold on. Pray on. Moan on. Just a little while longer. I got a feeling. I got a feeling. I got this feeling. I got this feeling. I got this feeling. Everything. Everything. Gonna be alright. Pastor. Whoa!